Let's now talk about slit diffraction. Now this happens when light is entering not just one hole or aperture, but multiple ones. So can you imagine laser light or some other light is coming in from the left, it's coming in this way, and there's a hole here for it to go through and another hole. Now remember we've learned before that um, depending on where that light goes, there could be a path difference. Like imagine if this light went, for example, to this point right here, and this light went to this point, you notice there, there wouldn't really be a path difference, and so we might have constructive interference where those two, you know, light um, waveforms, those patterns will actually add up. Whereas you might be, you know, a little bit higher up, maybe at this point, for example, maybe the distance that this light has to travel compared to the distance that this one has to travel, remember we call that the path difference, maybe it is such that um, it's destructive interference, so you have a minimum here maybe. So basically depending on how you go along here, along this axis here, you might have different places where the light is more intense, or the intensity here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to try to draw what this might look like. Imagine this right here is we're going to sort of overlay on this axis right here. Imagine this axis right here has been turned, and now it's this way. So this x-axis, that sort of represents what this one would be if it was sideways like this. So what I mean by this is that this right here would be, for example, x equals 0. That would be right here. Well, at x equals 0, we would expect this one right here, the path difference, to be such that, you know, the path difference is 0, probably, according to this symmetry, so that means it should probably have a maximum intensity. So maybe it starts up up here. And at some distance away, Maybe we say x is this way, for example. Uh, maybe up here then, maybe then the path difference is such that uh, it's a minimum. And then after that, it's going to be a maximum again, a minimum, and so on. So if you can guess what the pattern would look like, it would be something like, I mean, I'm not perfect at drawing this, but some sort of sketch that's supposed to look like the same heights here. I'm just not the best artist in the world here, as you can tell, but I'm trying. There we go. Something like this. This should be roughly the same height here. And furthermore, I can get this distance right here. We can tell what this is. So let's start defining some of these different features here. We've got D, lowercase d, which is this slit separation. That's the distance between your openings here. Now keep in mind that will be in meters. All right, so we've got that size. Then we've got the distance between those fringes. These are these top things right here. We call these fringes. So this right here is a fringe. And this right here would be another fringe. Okay, so the idea here is that we've got this fringe separation here. So we've got these fringes here. This one and this one are fringes. Well, we've got a fringe separation. That will be this S. Okay, S is the fringe separation. So that's also in meters. That's the distance between your maxima, let's say. So that could be that. Now, of course, your... Um, your slits and your screen are separated by some distance. That's what we call that capital D here. That's this distance right here. So at least that one's easy to remember because that one's a larger distance. Usually this distance is way larger than these. So the larger distance is the capital D. Now we have a formula for this, which is really nice. And it just goes like this. It goes S equals lambda D over that is at least a version of it. I like this version right here. It's the one you get in your formula booklet. But I really like this one because it, it just puts this together really nicely. You can basically figure out what your fringe separation depending on your wavelength and the distance and your slit separation. Which is really nice because you can start answering lots of conceptual questions. You can start answering questions like, um, ooh, if I want to make S bigger, so if I want to increase the fringe separation, what should I do? Well, to make this bigger, let's see, I can make lambda bigger, I can make d bigger, or I can make this little d smaller. Or you could think the opposite, you know, so you can start thinking quantitatively about this as well as qualitatively. By the way, the wavelength is also in meters. So luckily, the units all work out. If you look at this right here, this is, uh, let's see, s, which is in meters, should be equal to something in meters times something in meters. Well, meters times meters over meters, what will that do? Just for the units, notice the meters cancel out, so yay. So that's sort of, it all works out. So there we go, let's do an example. So this is an example that looks very much like what you'd see on an exam. So something like, you know, you have laser light of, uh, you know, 633 nanometers, that's what NM means. It's shining on two slits that are 0.25 millimeters apart. How far apart are the fringes on a screen placed 6.1 meters away? The key to doing this, I think, is to first figure out what's what. What are these different values here?
Um, also, I like to suggest to students always watch out for the IB trying to change units. Look at this. This right here is not in meters. So right away, when I see this, I would actually cross this out immediately and say this is 633. Now you have to remember what NM means. This is really cheap how I remember it. I mean, you can always look it up too in your formula booklet, but uh, this is a nanometer, and the way I remember it, it's a nanometer. It's so lame, but it's 10 to the minus 9. <laughs> so I remember these are nanometers, so I know it's 10 to the minus 9. This right here is not 0.25 millimeters. We're going to rewrite it as 0 0.25. And what do we do about millimeters? Millimeters are 10 to the minus 3 meters. So we can put everything in meters. This is in meters, so that one's okay. Now maybe it helps to start writing out what letters are what. So laser light of this right here. See, the way we're going to do this, we're going because we have fringes, we have light, and we have slits, and there's more than one slit, we're going to be using that equation. S equals lambda D over D. So the idea then will be we need to figure out what is what letter. That's it. This question is merely about solving for which variable is which or figuring them out. So let's figure out the easy one here, hopefully, 633. Hope you'll see that's the wavelength. So we know the wavelength is going to be 633 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. All right, what's this one? This is the slit separation. Slit separation is lowercase d. So that'll be d. So 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. And we have, uh, what else? Capital D as well. That's this one right here. It's 6.1 meters. That's because that's the distance between um, the slits and the screen. So that implies, and we must be looking, if we want how far apart are the fringes, this question then is asking, like, what do we want? We want, this is the question here. We want how far apart are the fringes. We want the fringe separation, which is S. That's what we want. So I don't even have to rearrange this. This is so easy. Look, I just put in S equals. I just say, well, I just put in all the numbers again. So 633 times 10 to the minus 9 all that times 6.1, all that divided by d, which is 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3. I just need a calculator for this. That might help. So I'll just get out my trusty calculator and do this. I'll make a pretty fraction here, and I'll say, all right, so 633 uh, times 10 to the minus 9, all that times 6.1, all that divided by 0.25, times 10 to the minus 3. And my answer then is 0 0.015445. Okay, I'm going to write that down. So 0 0.015445. 0 0.015455. Is that what I had? 154. No, I said 455. It's 445. See? That's why I checked. I'm always bad with numbers for that. There we go. Now, we can't just put this answer. We have to look at significant figures. We've got three here. We've got two here. We've got two here for significant figures. So I'm only allowed to use two. That means I can only use these two digits. So you could say, you could say it like this. You could say S equals Z. That would be the answer. Uh, in fact, this, let me just put a square around here. That'll be my final answer. I mean, you could say it that way. You could also say, I mean, it depends on how you feel like putting it in. Maybe the question says it was in uh, centimeters, you know, or what is what's going on. You can say it's 1.5 times 10 to the, let's see, 1, 2, minus 2 like this. Or you could say it's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Uh, you could say it's 1.5 centimeters because that's what those are. I mean, it's... There's lots of ways to say it, right? But I mean, this is your answer in proper significant figures. So see, it actually wasn't nearly so hard as you might think. The key is just to look at this equation, figure out what variables are what, and you're done.